Today, we talked to Fundstrat's Tom Lee on whether the 2022 crypto winter is over and his firm's $200,000 forecast on Bitcoin prices. Plus, crypto companies flood the zone with ads during the Super Bowl. And a new report says the vast majority of ransomware revenue ended up in Russia last year. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. This is a brand new five day a week show dedicated to all that's happening in the world of cryptocurrencies. We'll cover the price moves, the technology that makes crypto trading possible, regulation around the world, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. Cryptocurrency staged a bit of a comeback late this morning. The market as a whole gained about six tenths of a percent by noon Eastern. Bitcoin prices hovered right around $43,000 after rising by eight tenths of a percent since yesterday. Ether rose more than 2% and it sat around $3,000. Meanwhile, XRP fell by nearly 1%. Now, for more context on all that's happening in the crypto market, we turn to our own Tanea McKeel. Analysts are telling me Bitcoin is really range bound right now. Some are saying it found the lower end of that range in January and is now in the process of reversing higher. So the support level, at least one analyst has told me, um, is looking at about 37,300. However, they say Bitcoin is not really in store for a near term test anytime soon. I also talked to someone else who said, you know, keep an eye on the 50 day moving average. That's about the $41,900 mark. It says traders might be using that support level as a stop level um, with resistance at about $45,400 that could even go up to forty. $9,000, which would be the 200 moving day average. Okay, so you're up to date on crypto prices. So now let's catch you up on the headlines. First up, if you watched the Super Bowl last night, there is no way you could miss the buzz around crypto. Crypto.com, Coinbase, eToro, and FTX all ran ads during the game. Now, some featured stars like LeBron James and Larry David, while others were as simple as a bouncing screensaver. It is a sign of the technology going mainstream, sure, but the number of crypto-related TV spots is even more impressive if you consider the $6.5 million price tag for a 30-second ad slot during the Super Bowl. The NFL itself could be getting even more into crypto soon. The league recently disclosed that it lobbied the SEC on, quote, issues related to blockchain technology between July and December of 2021. Now, speaking of the SEC, it just reached a record settlement with BlockFi over its lending product. The wealth management company agreed to pay a $100 million penalty for its high yield interest accounts, which the SEC claimed were unregistered securities. The Wall Street Journal called it the largest penalty yet levied against a crypto company. BlockFi first came under fire from regulators back in November of 2021, when it was sent a cease and desist notice from four different states. Now the company can no longer offer its high yield lending service to customers in the US. And finally, we're keeping an eye on the rising tensions between Russia and Ukraine. So here's the latest on crypto in the region. A new report from Chainalysis found that nearly three quarters of all revenue from ransomware attacks, or about $400 million, likely went to addresses affiliated with Russia. Between 2019 and 2021, as much as 48% of all crypto sent to businesses in Moscow were from, quote, illicit and risky addresses, according to the report. One such recipient is SUEX, which has been sanctioned by the U.S. government. Now for our main story of the day. Fellow crypto world host Kate Rooney spoke with Tom Lee, Fundstrat's co-founder and head of research, to get his outlook for cryptocurrencies in 2022. I am joined here on Crypto World with Tom Lee. He's the co-founder and head of research at Fundstrat. Tom, so thank you so much for being here. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. And you guys have some really unique ways of valuing Bitcoin and a lot of other crypto assets. Uh, walk us through some of the on-chain data you use and, and some of the things that you're looking at that really aren't available in traditional equities and how you think, um, you know, Bitcoin is different from equities or bonds and any of the traditional assets that you might also cover at Fundstrat. I mean, in essence, I think crypto is interesting because every transaction is traceable. Um, I mean, unless you're using like a mixer, but um, that's what makes Bitcoin interesting, that it's not a way to really disguise what you're doing. Uh, you could be anonymous, but your wallet's not anonymous. And that's what makes crypto interesting because one, 
uh, not only can you actually look at the number of existing holders of crypto, but you can track the history. Uh, but ultimately, the value of crypto is, is just going to grow by the number of holders, which means there's a network value. Uh, so it's important for community growth. One of the things that I think is challenging is that uh, not every community member is as valuable. So I think there's going to be a lot of work done in the future about uh, what is the proper value add by an incremental member. What's holding it back? Uh, I mean, we're sort of in this $40,000 range. What needs to change in your mind to get Bitcoin to that 100000 and eventually $200,000 level? Um, if you look at U.S. household net worth, which is $142 trillion, um, which is a staggering number. I mean, that's you know, more than five times GDP. It's almost six times. Um, as interest rates look like they're set to reverse, almost 30 years of declines, right? I think interest rates probably are either flat or rising. That means for the next 10 years, you're guaranteed to lose money owning bonds. And so we call that guaranteed TINA. That's $55 trillion, almost $60 trillion of the $142 trillion. So the question we ask ourselves is, where is the $60 trillion going to go uh, to earn yield? And the obvious thing is going to be it rotates into stocks um, like FANG. Maybe it goes into crypto because you can generate yield um, through yield farming or lending. But I think what is more likely is that a lot of uh, speculative capital from equities flows into crypto. So I think it's really going to be tracing its roots to a, a rotation out of bonds is going to eventually flow into crypto. Perfect. I, I want to end with the biggest potential downside and the biggest potential upside catalyst for you and that $200,000 eventual target. What do you look yeah. to as you know, the, the thing that could unravel that um, on the downside? And then I'll also I'll ask you about uh, you know, the best news you could possibly get, but we'll start with maybe the negative and on a positive. Yeah, I think the biggest downside for crypto will actually be an expo a vulnerability exposed in Bitcoin because it's the most important blockchain and the one with the most value stored on it. And uh, there's really two things that could happen. One is if the cost of energy globally fell to zero, um, because if you don't have to spend money to protect a security network, then it means someone can launch a proof of basically a 51% attack. Um, and of course, the second is that cryptographic hash uh, becomes exposed, you know, meaning someone finds a way to actually, you know, whether it's quantum to, to essentially defeat the proof of work concept itself. So I'd say those are the biggest downside risk. And in terms of upside risk, at the end of the day, um, if I had to say what's the simplest way for, for a big step function to happen in crypto, it's really getting existing generations of investors in the US, not new investors, to actually be willing to allocate to Bitcoin. And 76% of all the wealth in America is controlled by people over age 65. So that's you know nearly $100 trillion uh, held by people that think Bitcoin is still kind of a hobby or things that people who live in the basement play with. So I think regulation could actually unlock a lot of that movement. I mean, just imagine, you know, 2% out of 100 trillion allocated to crypto, you know, you could see a five to 10, 15 times increase in, in total network value. Before we go, SoFi CEO Anthony Noto spoke to CNBC's Squawk Box about the crypto buzz at the Super Bowl. Here's what he had to say. I mean, we're invested in cryptocurrency. We own Bitcoin, we own Ethereum, we own some of the more obscure different cryptocurrencies, but it's a very small part of what we own. And with that, you are all cut up for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow with more, so we'll see you then.